Welcome back to California Cooking Thanksgiving. It's almost here and I'm sharing more holiday recipes with you guys. Last week was all about appetizers and pies. This week, we're cooking up a few Thanksgiving sides and Levi is joining me for dessert. Let's start with my favorite side on the Thanksgiving table, mashed potatoes. But this year, I decided to elevate my traditional mashed potatoes with some truffle butter and Gruyere cheese. Let's see how it turned out. Thanksgiving is not Thanksgiving without mashed potatoes. But I do think sometimes it's nice to put a little twist on an old classic. So Yukon Gold are the potatoes that I like to use for mashed potatoes. So these are Yukon Gold peeled, but here's what we're gonna do. Some truffle butter, white truffle butter. Now this little tube here is $12. So this is a special because it's real truffles. I got it at Gelson's. I think Bristol Farms sells it too. And it's a special ingredient because it, if you love the smell and the taste of truffles, as soon as you open it, you can smell it. So that's gonna permeate through our mashed potatoes, some sour cream, some Gruyere cheese, maybe some chives. All right, to make our mashed potatoes, I've got some water boiling over there in a big pot. And you're just gonna cut up your potatoes as you would. You all know how to make mashed potatoes. Potatoes, try to get them as even as you can. Big pot of boiling water, lots of salt. As much as you would put maybe even more into pasta because this is your chance to season your potatoes. And potatoes need a ton of salt to get flavor going, so. In go your potatoes and you're gonna just let them boil away until they're fork tender. Potatoes are out and what I like to do after I drain the potatoes is put them back in the hot pot and then all the water evaporates because you don't want watery mashed potatoes. So into the mixer, they go to the potatoes. I've warmed up some half and half. I think, I just think the warm, something it's something my grandmother did. She always warmed it up. Sour cream. I don't know, just keep adding heaps of it. A couple of cracks of black pepper. Some people don't like black pepper in their mashed potatoes because they like them to remain white, but I kind of like the black flecks of pepper. Some salt, I'm gonna need some salt. Here we go. I don't like lumps, so I got most of the lumps out. Good, but better when you add the truffle butter. So I'm gonna start with half because I don't, I don't wanna be overwhelmed by the truffle butter. All right. <laughs> While that's mixing, Gruyere cheese. A few handfuls. Okay, you don't wanna over mix, so. Oh, look at these, look at how fluffy. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's, I can't, I can't even speak because truffle butter makes everything so good. Some chives going in. One more quick whip, get that incorporated. And we're done. Look at these mashed potatoes. Look at this. Uh, luscious, cheesy. We're not done. Baking dish. You could butter the baking dish, but I'm just gonna skip that step. Pour in your potatoes. A little dot of butter here and there on top. It's Thanksgiving after all, so you gotta, some decadence is warranted. Sprinkling of Gruyere on top. I'm gonna pop them in a 425 degree oven just to brown it a little, get it to puff up, but it's already cooked and done. This is what's great about a dish like this. You make it the day before, and then Thanksgiving day, you just pop it in the oven for a couple of minutes and your mashed potatoes are done. I cannot wait to dig into these white truffle, Gruyere, chive mashed potatoes, and just putting them in the oven for a couple of minutes, they get nice and brown and the butter melts on top. My gosh. Okay, this is going on the table right now. 
Oh my gosh, those are my new favorite way of making mashed potatoes. Just a few dollops of that truffle butter. Wow, are those good. Okay, coming up, I'm sharing more ideas for your turkey day sides. I'm making a jeweled rice and the presentation is a showstopper. Then, how about a stuffed acorn squash with sausage and kale? And you know, there's always room for dessert. Levi and I are assembling a super simple pumpkin ice cream pie. That's coming up next. I love a dish that looks stunning on the holiday table, and this next recipe does not disappoint. Check out how I make my jeweled rice. I'm excited about this next dish because I happen to love the bowl that it's served in, which is a pumpkin bowl. And I just think that's gonna be the showstopper on the table this Thanksgiving. And what this dish is, Typically, I don't serve rice at Thanksgiving, but I do think it's a lovely option. It's also vegetarian, so that's another thing. If you have a vegetarian, this is a, a lot more hearty of a side, so they could certainly enjoy this. But I love the pumpkin, so it's a jeweled rice, and it's called a jeweled rice, and I found this, this recipe on Pinterest, and I'm doing a little bit of a take on it, um, and it's full of so many beautiful colors, like pomegranate seeds and dried cranberries and orange zest and so many, the, of course, the saffron rice that I made. And it just looks like a little jewel box inside this pumpkin. So for starters, I already went ahead and baked my pumpkin. So basically you cut it in half and it, I thought this would be a lot harder than it was. You just need a sharp butcher knife. So if you've got your butcher's knife, you want it to be sharp, it was not difficult at all. And then once you get in there, you scrape it out like you would all the seeds. Put it in an oven, 400 degrees, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how big your pumpkin is. Brushed it with some olive oil inside, salt, pepper. Easy. Put it on a parchment sheet, pop it in the oven, and I actually just let it sit out overnight. I put some tin foil over it and it's ready for today. So again, another do ahead. I would do this before Thanksgiving day because you don't want to be roasting a whole pumpkin. This takes up a lot of room in your oven. This recipe starts with the beautiful rice, and this is the basmati rice with the saffron. I put some salt in here and that's it. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna add that to our bowl. That's the base, and it gives it that gorgeous yellow color, and you see the flecks of saffron in there. So to the rice, we're gonna add all sorts of yummy things. I've toasted some nuts in a dry pan. I have almonds, pistachios, pine nuts, and you wanna get them nice and toasted. Those are gonna go in for some crunch. And then right now what I'm gonna do is cut a couple of shallots. So before I cook up my shallots, I'm going to, I don't know if it'd be marinate some shredded carrots, but almost pickling in a way, uh, because I'm gonna do vinegar, salt, and sugar, which are essentially things you would do to pickle something. So apple cider vinegar, sugar, about a tablespoon or so, some salt. Stir that up and just let that sit for a little bit. It's gonna kind of make the carrots sweet and tangy. Okay, let's cook up our shallots. Olive oil in the pan, shallots going in. And you wanna season every layer, so some salt. Ground coriander, tablespoon, and ground cumin. And then when you heat up spices, it wakes them up because they've been in this jar forever. I have a clove of garlic. I'm gonna just add a little bit of water. Because my spices were sticking to the pan and I wanted to get them off the pan so it doesn't burn. And that just lifted everything right like that. That's done. So now we assemble. We have our rice. To that, our onions, our shallots, and our spices. Our nuts, we've got the pine nuts, pistachios, slivered almonds going in. We have pomegranate seeds that do look like jewels. Dried cranberries. We're gonna, oh, our carrots that have been soaking in the vinegar and the salt and the sugar. Some orange zest, some good olive oil, a couple of drizzles around. 
some cracks of pepper. Now let's get this stirred together. Also, I have some fresh cilantro chopped. So that's gonna go in. And then you just stir it all together. So I'm gonna show you how to plate it. There's two more things I'm gonna do. This is labney, my favorite, which is a, a yogurt, a very, very thick yogurt. So I'm gonna flavor that with some garlic and some salt. Here's the platter. And basically, I'm gonna, a little base for your pumpkin. Pumpkin goes on. We scoop in our beautiful rice, our jeweled rice. Rice is in. Pomegranate molasses. This is very strong. And it's a Middle Eastern ingredient made from pomegranates. It's incredibly thick. So what I'm gonna do is just a very quick, quick little drizzle on top. A few cilantro leaves and voila, our jeweled rice is ready for the table. That dish is so colorful and I love that it's in that baked pumpkin. Wow, such a pretty dish. Okay, from a stuffed pumpkin to maybe some stuffed acorn squash with sausage and kale. Take a look. I don't know about your family, but at our house, we always have the same dishes every Thanksgiving, but sometimes it's nice to change things up a little bit. And I've always loved the idea of a stuffed acorn squash. It looks pretty, it's a single serving. If you cut this in half, then everybody gets their own portion of acorn squash. And there's so many different ways to do it. And I thought, okay, what if, as I attempt to cut this in half, what if I stuffed it with sausage and kale and pine nuts? So I'm gonna give that a try today. The hardest part about squash and any squash recipe is cutting the squash. It is very precarious. You need a sharp knife. And I got smallish ones because then when you cut this in half, one half will be a serving. Okay, there you go. And behind me here, you may hear it popping and cooking. I've got sausage. So I, I got two lengths of Italian sausage. You could do mild or spicy. I went with mild. And I basically took the casing off, which is the, you know, the casing around the sausage, and just got the meat in a pan, little bit of oil, and you wanna get that nice and brown. We need a spoon to scoop out the seeds. So we have got our acorn squash hollowed out. I'm gonna put them on a baking sheet. I'm gonna add a little olive oil, butter, a little bit of butter in the middle. And this is just a well to catch yummy ingredients. That in there, some salt, a little bit of garlic powder. And the more you flavor up the inside of the squash, the yummier it's gonna taste. A little nutmeg, always reminds me of the holidays. Okay, smoked paprika. And then these are gonna go in the oven. So first we're gonna get these nice and soft before we stuff them. 400 degrees, check them at 30 minutes, but probably about 40, 45 minutes until they're fork tender. So while the acorn squash is in the oven, I'm gonna cut up a little bit of onion. So this will go into our sausage mixture, which will be the stuffing mixture. Maybe a quarter of a large onion. Two, once we get our onions in the pan, I'm then gonna add some kale. So then we wanna chop it up pretty fine. Let's go back to our saute pan and cook up our veggie. Okay, in go the onion. Ah, little too hot. I put a little bit of avocado oil, so I kept the same Basically, it's the sausage pan. Took the sausage out because it was cooked and then added just a little more oil, but it's gonna pick up all the flavors of the sausage, which will be nice. And you just wanna cook these until they're softened. So our onions have softened. Now in goes the kale. That was just about three or four leaves of kale. And you're gonna let those cook until they get nice and soft and wilted. I'm gonna add a little bit of chicken stock because look at what that does. It deglazes all of that brown bit at the bottom of the pan from the sausage. And that's where the flavor is. One clove of garlic. Our kale mixture is done. I'm gonna add the sausage back in. Our acorn squash are perfectly cooked. 
they are nutty because they're nice and brown. They've got a little bit of the nutmeg, smoked paprika. Ooh, before I get to that, a little bit of pine nut. I'm gonna add some pine nut to our mixture. And that'll toast up. I always love a toasted pine nut versus a raw one, but these will toast up as they bake. Now you stop. I'm gonna top with a little bit of panko breadcrumb. It'll get that nice browned, crispy crunch on top. Add some olive oil, because the olive oil will help it brown. Otherwise, it's tough to get the breadcrumb to brown otherwise. Some Parmesan cheese on top. And that'll get nice and melted into the breadcrumb. Okay, these go back in the oven. Everything's cooked, so basically, you stick these back in the oven until the breadcrumbs get nice and toasty and the cheese is melted. And look at that, what a nice addition to your Thanksgiving table, stuffed acorn squash. The flavors in that squash, so good, and I love that everybody gets their own portion. It's delicious. Coming up, Levi loves ice cream, and I love a good pumpkin pie, so we're making a pumpkin ice cream pie. That's coming up next. Now onto my super simple take on a pumpkin pie, and it involves ice cream. Take a look. Hi. Hi, Levi. Hi. Do you know what we're gonna make today? Pumpkin pie. We're gonna make a pumpkin ice cream pie. So we're combining your favorite thing, which is ice cream, with some pumpkin puree. And before we do it, I need bite bite. You've already eaten everything on here. But here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna give these the good old wrestling move there with the graham crackers. So first, yeah. just like you would with a cheesecake, we're gonna do a graham cracker <laughs> crust. We have graham crackers. That are we, Levi are we is. making crust? Yeah, yeah. So let's throw in. I think you've managed to really do a number on those. Oh yeah. It's crust. Oh yeah. Oh, it's perfect. All right, I'm gonna pour them in. Oh yeah. We don't even need a food processor. You're so good. Now, in the bottom, by the way, I forgot to mention, I have about a quarter of a cup of, you could use any nut you want. I'm gonna use a walnut. And I just toasted them on the stove for a couple of minutes just to get them a little brown and toasty because this is a no-bake pie. Butter, melted, about four tablespoons. Pinch of salt, that's it. This is the crust, you ready? Pulse. Pulse, 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 pulse. That's good crust that I made. That is really good crust. Yeah. Look. Our graham cracker crumbs are sand. nice and feel it. Look, it's it's like sand. It's like wet sand. So we're gonna pour it in here. Take a little measuring cup. And here's what you wanna do, Levi. So you wanna smoothen it. Smooth it out. And that will help you get an edge. Okay, now I'm gonna take this. And, and make smush down. Yeah, and you want to get a rim going all okay. the way around. Okay, okay, I'll get a rim. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna put this in the fridge. You should probably let this chill at least an hour, maybe overnight if you can, if you have the time. What do you think, Levi? Does it look good? Let's do it overnight. Okay. That means you should go to bed. Now? hate to break up you and your vanilla ice cream, but we have to make the pie. I know. I love it. When it gets soft, vanilla bean ice cream. Thank you Going for ordering in. two. You're welcome. To that pumpkin puree. I'm gonna try, I, because I've never made this before, I'm gonna try half this can. Pumpkin and see guts. That, uh, pumpkin guts, exactly. Pumpkin pie spice, which pumpkin pie spice is cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and cloves. Because it's softened. Maybe I'm gonna write it, I'm gonna have a sleepover. What now? I'm gonna write it, I'm gonna have a sleepover. I'm gonna have a sleepover? Who do you wanna invite over? Looking for a sleepover. You. Aww. Okay, Levi, here we go. 
We're whipping our ice cream. Basically what we've done is made pumpkin ice cream. So I'm gonna give you a taste. Let me know what you think. Yum. I like it. Now what we do is our pie crust has been in the fridge. It has hardened up. Here's what we're gonna do. Are you ready for this? This is exciting. Look, Levi. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. The flavors of fall, this has to go back into the freezer. Okay, bye-bye. I would say an hour. Okay, you get a job. You are my salted caramel sauce drizzler. Okay, but before I'm gonna go get the pie, our pumpkin ice cream pie out of the freezer. Can you say pie, 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 pie? pie, pie. It hardened up. Oh boy. Now, Levi, look at this trick. Right? Our crust, it worked. I'm always excited and surprised when it works. You wanna drizzle? You ready to drizzle? You gotta do a pretty design. You ready? I don't know how to make design. Just go back and forth. I'm gonna make squibble, scrabble. Yeah! Whoa! Okay. Ta da! Ta -da. Should we try it? Let's take a bite. Good drizzle. What do you think? Love it. I love you. Thanks, Levi. Mmm. Levi and I had so much fun assembling that pie. You just have to make sure it doesn't melt before you eat it. Well, that does it for us. I hope you guys join us this Thanksgiving day for our very special episode of California Cooking. We'll see you then.